Res Moves Native Dance and Cardio presents a workout encouraging dance and exercise for healthy communities. So we're going to just take a deep breath in, bending your knees, and we're going to alternate. Again for eight. Arms down, stretching to the side, bending your knees. Stretching back up, alternate for eight, eight, seven, six, five, arms down, and we're going to rotate arms in and out, and in and out, and again coming up, alternating in, one, Two. Out, second position. Now we're going to alternate right, in, left, in, right, in. Last time. And taking a deep breath up, coming center, hands to your thighs, and we're going to reach down and drop your shoulder, one, two, three, four, switch it, four, three, two, one, and four, three, two, one, last time, four, three, two, one, rolling up, shoulders, and we're going to do that whole sequence again, coming down, two, three, four, drop shoulder, two, Left, two, four, and right, two, three, four, and last time, two, three, four, rolling up, one shoulder at a time. Roll forward, two, three, four, and back, two, three, four, and forward, two, three, four, and back, two, three, four. Great, second position. And we're going to just do some lower body. So we're going to touch with the toes. Seven, eight, and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Touch back in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come center, bringing your foot back and stretching your calves out and hold it for eight. eight. Two and one, bring it in. And another leg, stretching back. Hold it here. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And bring it in. This time we're going to do lunges. Right leg back. And your knee, your hips, your knees, and your toes. Here we go. We're going to lunge for eight, seven, eight. And one. Up, two, up, three. Good job, girls. And bring it in, feet touching. Left leg goes back, seven, eight, drop. One more time. And bring it in. Second position. You're just gonna, your knee is bent, your arm comes over, we're gonna stretch this out. And other side. Good job. Arms over the head and stretch. Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. And come center, come up. And now we're gonna do back drops. I'm gonna demonstrate this. So you're gonna go here and up. So we go for eight, seven, eight. Go one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, seven, and eight. Bring it up. Right foot comes back down behind and pull it in and just stretch out. And other side, bring it in, left goes out, arms come up and stretch out. And bring it in. Feet touching, second position, shoulders roll, two, three, four, and roll forward, two, three, four, and up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring it down, take a deep breath in, and let everything go and relax it out. One more time. And release everything, your anxiety, your stress, and just lean in here. So thank you for joining us in this exercise video. I wanted to have you to point out a couple things, and that is that Naomi and I will be doing a high impact, and that uh, Joey and a couple of the other gals will be doing low impact. So of course, you're always gonna check with your physician before you start any sort of exercise routine and um, make sure you know your, your limitations and how far you wanna go. So this is your workout, so enjoy yourself. Move that furniture aside and join us. I think it needs to get a little fast.
there. We're taking it from the top. You ready? Four, three, step behind. Four. Step side two. So we're going to just take a deep breath in, bending your knees, and we're going to alternate. Position. Now we're going to alternate right, in, left, in, right, in. Last time. And taking a deep breath up, coming center, hands to your thighs. And we're going to reach down and drop your shoulder. One, two, three, four. Switch it four. Three, two, one, and four. Three, two, one. Last time, four, three, two.
two, one. Rolling up, shoulders. And we're gonna do that whole sequence again. Coming down, two, three, four. Drop shoulders, two, three, four, and left. Two, four, and right. Two, three, four, and last time. Two, three, four. Rolling up, one shoulder at a time. Roll forward, two, three, four, and back. Two, three, four, and forward. Two, three, four, and back. Two, three, four. Great, second position. And we're gonna just do some lower body. So we're gonna touch with the toes. Seven, eight, and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Touch back in one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come center, bringing your foot back and stretching your calves out and hold it for eight. Eight. Two and one, bring it in. And another leg, stretching back. Hold it here. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and bring it in. This time we're gonna do lunges, right leg back, and your knee, your hips, your knees, and your toes. Here we go, we're gonna lunge for eight, seven, eight, and one, up, two, up, three. Good job, girls. And bring it in, feet touching, Left leg goes back, seven, eight, drop. One more time, and bring it in. Second position, you're just gonna, your knee is bent, your arm comes over, we're gonna stretch this out. And other side, good job. Arms over the head and stretch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And come center, come up. And now we're gonna do back drops. I'm gonna demonstrate this. So you're gonna go here and up. So we go for eight. Seven, eight, go one. Up, two, up, three, up, four, up, Five, seven, and eight. Bring it up. Right foot comes back down behind and pull it in and just stretch out. And other side. Bring it in. Left goes out. Arms come up and stretch out. And bring it in, feet touching, second position, shoulders roll, two, three, four, and roll forward, two, three, four, and up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, bring it down, take a deep breath in, and let everything go and relax it out. One more time. And release everything, your anxiety, your stress, and just leave it here. Addison is from the Ponderay and Northern Arapaho people. 
She is 25 years old and is attending Salish Kootenai College in pre-engineering. She is the mother of twin sons, Talon and Thomas Addison, who will be two in March 2010. Marianne has been dancing since she was in the womb. Primarily, she has danced the fancy style. Additionally, she enjoys playing basketball. Dancing keeps Marianne healthy, and it is an important part of her family's life. This is Ko Karu, descendant of the Mescalero Apache tribe. Her great-great-grandmother's name is Pante Leon. Her great-grandmother is Juana Tochi. Her grandmother is Margarita Correa. Her mother is Ko Karu. Ko dances because she feels this is a way to honor her ancestors. She dances because this is a way to express her culture and honor indigenous cultures around the world. She loves to dance and allows whatever body shape she has at the time to move through space. This is Naomi Billadu Myers. She is 37 years old and is Chippewa, Salish, and Blackfeet. She is a graduate from the University of Montana with a bachelor's degree in communication studies. For Naomi, dance is a form of prayer and celebration. She dances for the people, her children, and to celebrate life and health. She dances for the people to have spiritual freedom in knowing who they are and where they come from. Naomi says, I dance for the ones who came before me. I dance hard because I'm representing my family and spirituality. Every step is a prayer for the people. Every step is for future generations. This is Felicia Paul. She is 30 years old and comes from the Ponderé, Blackfeet, and Chippewa Cree tribes. She lives at Post Creek, Montana. Her two children are precious little dancer Paul David and little John Pierre. Her grandparents were the late John and Agnes Paul, the late Joe Lemire of Rocky Boy, and the late Loretta Grant Williamson of Hart Butte, Montana. Felicia says, I have been dancing since I could walk. I enjoy dancing and meeting new people on the powwow trail. I dance for my people and family who can't be at the powwows. I represent my family and people when I dance, through my outfit and where I come from. This is Soraya Dubois. She is 18 years old and is from the Salish and Crow tribes. Her Indian name is Speckled Woodpecker. Soraya's style of dance is jingle dress dancing, and the meaning of this dance is a healing dance. Soraya has been dancing and traveling to powwows all of her life. She hopes to encourage young kids and teenagers to stay drug and alcohol free and to start dancing. Soraya dances for her family, the people who can't dance, and for her elders. This is Catherine Addison. She is 22 years old, and she is from the Ponderé and Northern Arapaho people. Catherine has been dancing all her life, and even before she was born. Dancing helps Catherine live a healthy lifestyle because alcohol and drugs are not part of the dance circle, and it is good exercise. Catherine likes to travel to many different powwows. It makes her proud that her daughter, Talena, has already learned to dance at the age of two. Catherine wants to encourage her daughter to live an active and healthy lifestyle due to the high risk of diabetes in her family. This is Amber Walks Over Ice. Her Indian name is Kills Across the Water. She has been dancing since she has been able to walk. She loves to travel to different powwows with her family to dance and meet new friends. When she dances, she feels very blessed to have the ability to dance for her family, elders, and the health of others. She is very proud to be a member of Salish people and feels very fortunate to be able to express herself in this way. Dancing at powwows has always been a way for her to unwind and release the stresses of her daily life. Amber is currently a second-year pharmacy student at the University of Montana and plans to work for her people upon completion of her degree. This is Joey Jane. She is 52 years old and is from the Diné Nation. She has lived on the Flathead Reservation for the last 15 years and lives near Arlie with her husband. She is an attorney and former four-term legislator for the Montana House of Representatives. She is usually a traditional dancer, and recently she has been trying the fancy and jingle styles. She has always been committed to physical fitness and also enjoys distance running and horseback riding. My name is Ruth Swaney. I am Salish Kootenai and Ponderay. I have two daughters and three grandchildren. I began dancing when I was 12, and it was at the Arley 4th of July celebration. Dancing is a healthy way for me and my family to spend time together. 
I exercise regularly so that I can dance with energy and endurance throughout the powwows. When I dance, I think of how we danced long ago, outside with the earth below and the sky above. Our people had many different dances for prayer, giving thanks, and for celebration. I try to dance with dignity and pride because I'm remembering my ancestors. This is Amanda Decker. She is 23 years old and is a member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes. She has been dancing since she could walk. Amanda feels fortunate to come from a family who strongly believes in and practices their culture. When she dances, she dances for her family and to pray that they are strong. Amanda is a graduate from the University of Montana with a Bachelor of Arts in both Native American Studies and Anthropology. In the future, she hopes to become an attorney so that she can help her people. Community Health and Development Department at Salish Kootenai College wants to thank you for purchasing the Res Moves Native Dance and Cardio Workout. My name is Ruth Swaney and I am Salish Kootenai and Pondere and I started dancing when I was 12 years old at the Arley 4th of July celebration and I have two daughters and three grandchildren and powwow is an important way of life for us. It's a healthy family activity that we all enjoy and I just look forward to taking part every year whether it's the small powwows we have here at home and we travel to other powwows as well and it's a family event for us. Uh, so you've been dancing since you were 12. Uh, what's one of the bigger changes you've seen in the powwow circle? The powwows, for the most part, are contest oriented. You don't see too many traditional powwows where it's just to be there together to dance and the singing. So anymore it seems that they are structured around competition dancing. Um, what about like the outfit changes? Do you see anything? Is there any, uh, maybe the different styles of dancing? How, how has that evolved? Well, it's a lot of the styles seems like today we borrow from a lot of other people's styles and, and um, techniques and patterns, if you will. You used to be able to tell a uh, person's tribal origin from the way their outfit was put together, some of the designs, and just some of the way the, the uh, outfits were constructed. And now it seems like we've, we've borrowed a lot so much that it's hard to tell. That's, that's one of the things I've noticed. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start dancing but isn't quite sure how to go about that? Oh, <laughs> you should just go out there and try it, but what I think is the older person is, the harder it is for them to get out there. You feel more self-conscious. But um, I've heard of people that would just say play either DVDs or CDs and watch the dancing first and then just try to say practice at home. And uh, I know we enjoy doing that ourselves just for exercise and just to, you know, kind of practice some of the newer steps. That's another thing too. Um, you have to learn some of the more contemporary steps and styles that I remember dancing in a women's traditional senior category no less <laughs> at R. Lee and we had to dance four songs and one of them was a double beat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have to be ready and uh, that's a good way to start is just practice and uh, watch other people get some ideas but your style will be your own. 
that's that's what it'll be. All right, thank you. It has been said by elders of our tribe that we as Salish and Pandre people did not dance to entertain or to make money. We dance to celebrate, and we dance as a form of prayer and to give thanks to our Creator. Some dances which are unique to our interior Salish tribes are our coffee dance, our snake dance, our canvas dance, our lost article dance, and our scout dance. Today, forms of these dances have become part of powwows held across the country. The snake dance represents the warriors returning from a raiding expedition. The Salish people snake dance begins north of the village. The war dance leader and the warriors dance in serpentine fashion to the village, making four circles before entering the dance area. The drummers and singers follow the dancers. Canvas dance songs were sung by warriors who were getting ready to go on a raiding party. The warrior who led the raiding party started the singing, going from camp to camp in a counterclockwise direction, carrying a buffalo hide or hides, and singing and hitting the buffalo hide with a stick. During the canvas dance songs, warriors were recruited. They joined in and began to sing as a way to show they were joining the war party. Farewells were given to the people by the warriors, and many women walked and sang behind their husbands. The women's song for their husbands was to come home safely. The historical coffee dance had nothing to do with coffee. The way the dance began was, buffalo broth from the first killed buffalo of the season would be placed in the center of the camp to be blessed. The men of the tribe performed the dance as a way of blessing the first killed buffalo. In 1950, buffalo broth was replaced by coffee, thus becoming the coffee dance. The scout dance translates to borrowing wives. A man would walk among the village asking the women to take part. The women were taken to certain camps to be painted and dressed. The men brought men's clothing and headdresses and also scalps. These were the items the warriors had used in battle. When all the scalp dancers arrived at the dance area, the singers lined up side by side. The step is a little different from the round dance, more like a jumping motion. During the dance, one of the women might place a special stick on a singer's shoulder. If he didn't push it away, they were considered married. When the women celebrated a victorious battle, they would dance the scalp dance for four or five days. <laughs> 